Okay, obviously this is going to seem like a uh, superficial, very stupid video. But if you can bear with me for just a minute, let's actually learn something that will be beneficial to you. Okay, we're looking at a sliver of evening light here, which of course everybody admires and all photographers love. This is the golden hour of photography, either be a dawn or dusk. It gives definition to things, and this, of course, is why we use speed lights, because light does not want to cooperate with us most of the time. Either that, or, of course, we only have about a 40-minute window in the morning or in the evening to capture things. So the real question is, do you know how to meter, and what is it that you're metering for? Okay. What do I want compositionally? And how can I translate that and completely make my camera irrelevant so that I'm only thinking about the composition and the light and not fiddling with the camera? This is something that you should sit in front of the window either early in the morning or late in the evening and experiment. I mean, if you don't have a model, that's fine. Stick a stuffed bunny rabbit in the window in the early morning light or in the evening and just experiment for an hour. And this will improve your photography more than you'll ever know. And you'll go, oh, this is stupid. You're so full of crap. Trust me. Okay? Take one morning or one evening doing this, and you'll learn more about what you need to do in your photography and make it subconscious. The more subconscious you can make exposure, the more you can concentrate on composition. When you have your camera between yourself and your subject, and you're more worried about fiddling with your camera, what happens is you end up with ruined shots. Even with the best gear, the best lenses, and the best lighting, you will end up with ruined shots. Okay? Now, what do I want to expose for? If I meter for uh, the light on this, if I spot meter for the light on this, how is that going to uh, affect these spots in the shadow? What is that going to do? Remember, your camera wants to turn everything into gray sludge, whether that's matrix metering or spot metering. So if I spot meter, which I do a lot, and you should practice with, because that's going to be the best teaching tool you're ever going to have, better than any photography course on earth, better than going to photography school, better than paying some idiot, some arsehole, a bunch of money to take his stupid workshop, photography workshop. What's going to happen if you spot meter for the light? What's that going to do to the shadows? Well, if I spot meter for the light, then I'm going to have correct exposure for the illumination, but then I'm going to lose uh, all my detail, depending on the dynamic range, in my shadows. Well, with edge lighting, that's exactly what you want. Okay? Stop trying to perfectly expose everything. It's the most interesting photographs in the world, and I did a, uh, a, uh, a gear giveaway a few months ago where someone had to turn the entire shot about 90% plus into total blackness, so there's only 10% illumination. If that's what you want, you need to be able to learn how to do that. Okay? Now what if I want perfect illumination and still have the uh, proper uh, dynamic range of my shots so that I don't blow up my highlights? I'm still spot metering for the light, so what do I do? I'm going to spot meter for the light, and depending on the, the dynamic range of the scene, I'm going to open up two or three stops. Okay? So what is that going to do to the shadow? What is that going to do to the light? This is also why you need to be shooting in RAW. It gives you that leeway with the digital negative. You need to be looking at light. Take, a, take your daughter, take your wife, if you don't have anybody, stick a stuffed bunny rabbit or... You know, it could be anything. I mean, like something like this. Take a, a thermos bottle. Stick it in the window with a sliver of light coming through. I mean, what you can teach yourself with any object like this, especially one that has a lot more dynamic range, as far as between your highlights and your shadows, start spot metering and take some morning or evening light. And what you're going to be doing is obviously not only teaching yourself how to meter, but you're going to be eliminating the camera that exists between your mind and what you want to do creatively and your shot. Because when you place your camera between it, it's like sticking a blindfold over your eyes. The camera needs to become an irrelevant tool that lets you achieve what is between your ears, i.e. your brain, and the shot that, was, that is within your brain to capture on your SD card or your compact flash card. Your camera needs to become irrelevant. Now you've got all the right tools, you need to learn how to use them. So what do I meter for? Well, if I spot meter for the highlights here, What's going to happen? If I matrix meter this shot, what's going to happen? 
Oh, what's going to happen if I matrix meter this shot? There's all the light that's coming back into the camera is going to cause all of this to whoosh, mostly black out. You might be able to pull a good deal of it. You probably will with this dynamic range. In uh, post, if you were capturing it in RAW, which you should always be shooting in RAW anyway. So if I matrix meter, that's what's going to happen. Now if I spot meter for the highlights here, what's going to happen? Well, it's going to be really drastic. Even if you capture a RAW, a lot of this stuff back here is going to be gone, isn't it? But compositionally, is that what you want? It may very well be. Some of the best uh, nude shots and portrait shots are the uh, picture is 80 or 90 percent black. Okay? The most, it's the same reason why some of the most scintillating shots of the most gorgeous women in the world are not buck naked nude. You know, they have uh, something on. You know, the, uh, the best uh, photograph, and I think I came up with this, I don't think I heard it anywhere, the best photograph in the world is the one in your mind that makes up the rest of the shot that isn't present for your eyes to see. You don't have to see everything. This is why people, uh, you know, this is why people think that a classy lingerie shot is awesome, yet the same woman, you know, totally buck naked, where you can see every anatomical feature, is not that classy. There's nothing left to the imagination. Imagination is uh, the best photograph in many instances. So trying to illuminate the hell out of everything or blasting light everywhere. Well, I'm going to matrix meter this and I'm going to expose for the highlights and then I'm going to uh, open it up three more stops so I've got proper dynamic range between my shadows and my highlights and they're going to be properly. Well, that's great and that may be compositionally valid, but you got to get out of that box. Okay, you got to stop thinking what your camera is thinking. And what your camera is thinking is eh, I'm always going to try to meter and turn this into gray sludge. Okay, matrix meter program mode you know, uh, camera designers even take their best, most expensive professional cameras and try to turn them into idiot boxes that has uh, perfect exposure. For it. Well, that doesn't, that's boring. That's the same thing as, uh, you know, a lingerie catalog versus, no, don't, you know, don't take those two for It's the same difference between a lingerie catalog and a hustler magazine. You know, it's like, oh, well, they're both gorgeous women, but, you know, this is, uh, kind of leaves nothing to the imagination and it's classless and it has no taste. Whereas this, you know, I got the same model over here and beautiful lingerie. I don't have to see everything. Not everything has to be perfectly illuminated in your shot. The same thing applies to photography. The way the mind works in admiring compositional beauty and understanding light is it can fill in the rest as long as you are the artist that understands that what you're painting what you're illuminating for gives definition and character to what it is you want to shoot now if I were to spot me to the highlight in this particular composition of course this is the most boring subject in the world and everything else is blown out in black. I still have definition to my cap because I know that's within the dynamic range if I actually spot meter for this spot right here. I know that the cap up there is within the dynamic range to be exposed. Everything else over here is going to be black. But I understand what this is. That is more interesting than me sticking a flash over here illuminating this obviously with noonday light. Uh, and no flash and having a perfectly exposed shot, whether that be a model or a child, start thinking of what it is you need to expose for. You need to actually stick something in the, moon, in the morning light or the noonday light and spot meter for the light and understand what happens if I spot meter for the light, what happens over here in the shadows. What happens if I matrix meter? Matrix metering makes you stupid. It's like having someone feeding you in bed while you're wearing a diaper. You know, you, you become a gelatinous orb. Uh, kind of like me, vegetating behind the computer hour after hour. You <laughs> it makes you lazy. It makes you stupid. You got to think. You have to exercise your brain. So what happens if I spot meter for this light? Everything is going to be spot... Everything that is metered is going to be turned into sludge perfect illumination. That's the, I, I think of a funny way to, to talk about that as far as, uh, you know, your camera wants to turn everything into sludge. Whatever you set for metering, whether it's spot metering or matrix metering, it wants to turn that into perfect 18% uh, gray sludge. Um, is that valid in many instances? Yeah, it is. That if you apply that to spot metering, then you're taking control over the camera instead of the camera taking control over you. Your camera has to become an irrelevant tool that is, uh, you know, a, a thoughtless expression of what is in your mind that you want. You see something, and it could be a boring shot, but you can make it fascinating if you know, say, well, this is the most boring shot in the world, but if I spot meter and expose for the highlights and uh, give enough definition to what's in the shadows and adjust it in raw, 
you know, then I've got a wonderful shot. So, anyway, stick your child or your wife in the morning or evening light and uh, give it some harsh edge lighting like this and uh, experimenting with spot metering. Start learning what it is that you need to expose for. What it is that you need to expose for and what that does. Start spot metering. Start failing. Okay? One of the best teaching tools is failure, and the only way to uh, uh, polish a mirror is uh, through abrasion, at least the old type of mirrors. People uh, think of a modern type of mirror. The old ones are used the metallic uh, particles and uh, other abrasives to finer and finer to polish a mirror. It's an old uh, Chinese uh, metaphor about how do you make a mirror. You know, you have to have uh, agitation. You have to have uh, grit. You have to apply. You start need to failing in your photography. And take an hour like this in the morning light or evening light and start to fail. I was about to head out the door. Sorry, this was kind of a boring... Well, the topic isn't boring. The topic is incredibly important. See, now the light's fading. It's going right now. This is also why you need to learn how to use a speed light. In the few minutes I've been talking in this video, obviously the light is going fast. Okay? So, do you want to be slave to your uh, slave to the sun? This is why mastering a speed light is so very, very vital and so very important. Because I can mimic all of this stuff. All of it! You can take the magic 40 minutes in the morning and the magic 40 minutes in the evening and you could have it all the time. All the time. I can go out in the bright noonday light and underexpose the hell out of the shot, but if I apply the proper speed light illumination, then I can mimic this light. I could even throw a golden filter or an orange filter, you know, over my speed light. I can mimic all of this stuff. And then you become a master of the light, and that is what defines professional photography. While this video was kind of boring to look at, it wasn't about the video, it was about the audio and what it is you need the hell to do. Okay? Thanks for watching. Catch you later.